Generally, when someone thinks of a DAO defense game, they can imagine a linear path of DAOs that you have to place in order to defend from the inbound enemies. Okay, so in my recent video about TD games, I was also wrong about one of them. Well, DAO defense isn't that at all, with over 200 concurrent players every day. I discovered it quite a while ago, but when I first saw the title of the game, yeah, it didn't exactly captivate my curiosity. I think the most generic game name ever, but this Star Defense game is far from being generic if we can even call it a Star Defense game. I'll be gossing over the new player experience, which includes the tutorial and the progression, and then I'll be talking about the gameplay. So let's get into it. So upon joining the game for the first time, you'll notice that you are teleported to a tutorial map with two units available, the soldier and the sniper. As you progress into this tutorial, you are told to place towers and that the enemies will attack your units first, with some exceptions such as the rusher. And how global upgrades work. In other terms, this tutorial isn't exactly helpful to say the least. Once you stop receiving instructions but to be the tutorial mode, I quickly realize you aren't meant to beat it when the game spun in a summoner and soldiers and all of the snipers can do much about those. Maybe you can do better if you have already played the game, but it's mostly players who have joined the game for the first time who are gonna attend this tutorial and they pretty much have no idea of what is going on. Regardless, once you fail the tutorial, you have to put it back to the actual lobby of the game. In this lobby, the first thing you'll notice is that there is a plethora of currencies which include coins, trophies, and tokens. There's also different shop sections for each type of towers. Creds, trophy, tokens, and PvP. The towers in different categories all require different currencies to unlock them. Once you make it in this game, the only thing you'll need are coins, which, just like tokens, you can earn from any game mode, and they will allow you to unlock towers under the creds section. Generally, if the towers, it's important to know that to win in any game mode, it isn't just going to take DPS towers to win a game, you're going to need bait, tanks, and support towers mixed with some economy towers. So far it doesn't sound too complicated, but wait a second, what about towers that don't just require coins to unlock? The towers in the category trophy all requires the certain amount of trophies to unlock new towers. This category is mostly made up of support towers, which some are required to have a chance against the other difficulties. Okay, but you can't just grind the easier difficulties first to unlock better towers, right? Wrong! Casual mode, which is difficult enough on its own for new players, only awards you coins and a ridiculous amount of tokens. But the only game mode that can award you trophies for completing it is burdensome, and as the title of the game mode suggests, it's quite a burden. As you can see by my uh, amount of coins in my main account, which by the way, all those coins are all for my failed burdensome attempts. If you still don't see where I'm going with this, well, let me help you a little. You see, there's an enormous paradox about this. To be burdensome, you need trophy towers, and how do you unlock trophies, you may be asking. Well, by beating burdensome. This is by far the most question design I've ever seen in any Roblox game ever, and not just the tower defense genre. Do we explain how hard it is? Well, just look at the badges. 130,000 people unlock the casual badge. Meanwhile, only 50,000 people unlock the Burnington badge, which means only 61.5% of the players who have beaten casual have not beaten Burnington. To be this game mode, it takes completely mastering the usage of towers like the Assassin or unholy amounts of baiting. Trophies are hard to obtain. At least that was true until there was the PvP game mode, which I made a huge mistake of overlooking in terms of rewards. So yeah, in the middle of the making of the video, instead of publishing an inaccurate and poor character review, I decided to redo the entire script. So please subscribe, thank you in advance. So yeah, the current survival to earn trophies and tokens to play games of PvP all the way every day of the week. At first I was pretty reluctant to try out this game mode because I thought I wouldn't stand a chance against high level players, but then I realized it's a matchmaking system so I was lucky to end up with players worse than I am. You can easily get 100 trophies within a day and that's no exaggeration. It also gives you PvP tokens, which allow you to unlock some pretty fun towers dedicated to PvP. All it takes is to have at least one trophy to unlock the game mode, which by the way you can get from active codes. 
and it's literally just about spamming engineers. If you survive the Avenger, you are guaranteed to get at least one trophy and a couple of tokens if you lose, and you will lose a lot against IR players, but as I just said, you will still get plenty of rewards. In reality, you can easily unlock all trophy towers, but the thing is, in order to unlock token PvP towers, you first need to beat the special map ruined facility. So good luck with that, you need 10 trophies by the way. I've already talked about the gameplay a bit, and honestly, World Tower Defense completely throws every other TD game overboard. In my, in my last video, criticizing the TD genre, I talked about how the game plays itself, and all you do is mindlessly place and upgrade your towers to win games with no effort required. All you need is some high damage towers in your loadout, and you can easily beat everything a generic TD game has to offer. For tower defense requires intense triagizing, you need to be careful when composing your tower loadout, as I briefly mentioned earlier. No single tower in World Tower Defense will win any game mode, and I'll be damned if you can one that can even solo casual. Towers in your, your loadout, just like nitrogen spaces in your DNA, this most certainly isn't a fast analogy, are complementary. You can have one without the other or you will lose. Apart from just unlocking units, less obviously skins, but there's also accessories that can modify your towers in interesting ways. And they all have their own upsides and downsides, such as the cone and the cranium, which boosts the health and damage of all units value units, which increases the cooldown and their cost. The accessories can even buff the stats of specific units or completely transform them. In the table example being the stationary cape, which makes the engineers spawn attack drones around it instead of defensive robots. There's also trinkets that have a similar role to accessories, and you have a small chance of obtaining them after winning game of survival. So in conclusion, the beginner experience in this game is absolutely horrible, and the guidance of new players is kept at a minimum, but if you persevere, this game can get pretty fun. Though I do admit that sentence doesn't make it much sense, since it amounts to saying, well, which level 200 in X game for the real deal, and if a game is not fun from the start, well then it's never fun. When it comes to the gameplay, there's a lot of different ways to twist up your gameplay, and there's no such thing as a meta strategy. One last thing I'd like to talk about before wrapping up this video is that this game has an all to it, and similar to Tablets, it should be as though, and you can inspect the different enemies to see what's up. I'd also like to admit that I've just barely begun to scratch the surface of this game, and I'll probably have to make a second volume for this video that will probably contradict all of the points that I made and for the better or the worse. Anyways, if you want to check out the game for yourself, it's linked in the description. See ya!